In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. And we apologize to God, saying together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Mass today is being offered for the healing of Mildred Reckla, Amy Reckla, Lucas Balanjit, Eric Lopez, Felicissima Castro, Chelsea Dixon, Gabriel Lazari, Alex Tardicilla, Rafford Hadas, Gina Bellaton, Maria Morales, Agnes Vu, Chris Jane Gabon, Ruth Padon, Benjamin DeMello Kearns, Family Candles, Peter Kajaloff, Andrew Maniz, Eduardo Morales, Mercedes Fagan, Magdi Gabriel, Cristino Sebio, Conchita Maria Batten, Court Madero, Sam Whole Lawrence, Isabel Martins, Baby Valentina, Aurelia Delara, Olivia C., Laura, Jesse, Charles Popo, Zaid Zato, Michael Mello, Matthew Vacari, Michael A. Norma Pitcher, Madeline Lee, Benam Fernandez, Orlando Monacal, Sarah DeMello, Irma Barico, Maria Lilia Tienza, Pacifico Trabado Jr., Arias Magali, Santino De Vito, Ugaba Benjamin, Fri Daniel, Louis Medeiros, Rizzuto Antonio, Ludovina, Fernandez, Yolanda, Kim. For the intentions of Elnora Pasqua, Sheila Aquino, Brigham Mila Cueva, Eveline Richard, Benny Garces, Evelyn and Eugenio Cruz, all volunteers in the parish. For the souls of Alma Murray, John, all souls in purgatory. We pray, O God, for whose honor the Bishop St. Stanislaus fell beneath the sword of his persecutors, grant, we pray, that we may persevere strong in faith even until death. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God second person of the Trinity, who lives and reigns with you, Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the temple police had brought the apostles from preaching in the temple, he had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior, that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When the members of the council heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord the hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crust in spirit. Many are the flexion of the righteous, 
but the Lord rescues them from them all. The Lord, the Lord hears, hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen. Happy those who have not seen me, yet believe. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John the Baptist said to his disciples, The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly things. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, yet no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted his testimony has certified this, that God is true. He whom God has sent speaks the word of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has placed all things in his hands. Whoever believes in his Son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but must endure God's wrath. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The post-Pentecost scene that we read all these days in Acts of the Apostles reveals a new bravery in announcing the gospel, which Peter and the apostles discovered. They're far different men from the fleeing and cowering disciples of Gethsemane. They've come to the light, or more accurately, the light has come upon them. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. That single sentence declares clearly what it means to obey God instead of obeying human beings and the world. We are filled with God the Holy Spirit. We need to let people understand this. I tried on the weekend in various means. Uh, one means was to teach people the difference between being indwelt with God the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of God the Holy Spirit in us, and the choice of being filled with God the Holy Spirit. Having God the Holy Spirit does not require choice. We get the Holy Spirit at baptism, and most of us were baptized as babies. It's not like we asked for God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was given to us as God's greatest gift. That's how the church labels God the Holy Spirit, the greatest gift. But there's a difference between the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is a choice. We have In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. And we apologize to God, saying together, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Mass today is being offered for the healing of Mildred Reckla, Amy Reckla, Lucas Valenjit, Eric Lopez, 
Felicissima Castro, Chelsea Dixon, Gabriel Lazari, Alex Tardicilla, Roar Fortades, Gina Bellaton, Maria Morales, Agnes Vu, Chris Jane Gabon, Ruth Padon, Benjamin de Mello Kearns, Feli Callis, Peter Kajalov, Andrew Maniz, Eduardo Morales, Mercedes Fagan, Magdi Gabriel, Christina Eusebio, Conchita, Maria Battencourt, Madero, Emma Ho, Lawrence, Isabel Martins, Aurelia Delara, Olivia C., Jesse, Charles Popo, Zid Zafu, Michael Mello, Matthew Vacari, Michael A., Norma Pitcher, Madeline Lee, Benam Fernandez, Rolando Monacal, Sarah De Mello, Irma Berico, Maria Lilia Tienza, Pacifico Trabado Jr., Arias Magali, Santino De Vito, Rugaba Benjamin, Free Daniel, Louis Madeiros, Baby Valentina, Rizzuto Antonio, Ludvina Fernandez, Yolanda Kim. For the intentions of Elnora Pasqua, Sheila Aquino, Brigham Mila Cueva, Eveline Richard, Benny Garza, Evelyn and Eugenio Cruz, all volunteers in the parish. For the souls of Alma Murray, John, all souls in purgatory. We pray. O oh God, for whose honor the Bishop Saint Stanislaus fell beneath the swords of his persecutors, grant we pray that we may persevere strong in faith even until death. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, second person of the Trinity, who lives and reigns with you, Father and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the temple police had brought the apostles from preaching in the temple, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised up Jesus. When you had killed by hanging him on a tree, God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When the members of the council heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The face of the Lord is against evil doors to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord, hears the, cry of the, poor. the Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crust in spirit. Many are the flexion of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from them all. The Lord, the Lord hears, hears the cry. The cry. Alleluia, alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me. Happy those who have not seen me but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John the Baptist said to his disciples, The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly things. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, yet no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted his testimony has certified this, that God is true. He whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has placed all things in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but must endure 
God's wrath. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The post-Pentecost scene in today's, go- in today's first reading reveals a new bravery in announcing the Gospel which Peter and the Apostles discovered. They're far from the men that were fleeing and cowering disciples in Gethsemane. They've come to the light, or more accurately, the light has come upon them. They have received the Holy Spirit. That single point capitulizes their new strength. It's important as we understand that. On the weekend, I tried to explain it in terms of the difference between the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit, two different terms used in the Bible. At baptism, we receive God the Holy Spirit. Most of us did not choose to be baptized. Most of us were baptized as children, as babies. That is indwelling. We receive the Holy Spirit. Then at confirmation, we use the language that we receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit, preparing us for adulthood. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is a choice. That is a choice that people have to make to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That comes from staying connected to God the Holy Spirit, living out our faith, maintaining our obligations, our duties to the Lord and to God the Holy Spirit. It's important that we're careful in this regard because a lot of people don't understand that they have to continually stay connected to God the Holy Spirit. It is not something that just happens. There is a free will choice involved. And we emphasize this at confirmation. But the fundamental problem with our system is that we don't continue that emphasis. At confirmation, we make it very clear as we're just finishing now the formation of the children for confirmation. It is a choice. You have to choose to be confirmed. You have to choose to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is the way you do that. But after confirmation, there is a weakening of connection to God the Holy Spirit, mostly because Again, as I've often said to you, frequency equals intimacy. If one wants an intimate connection to God the Holy Spirit, frequency is essential. One cannot rely on automatic. It requires us to intentionally make a free will choice to stay connected to God the Holy Spirit. I use the analogy of Mother Teresa when she spoke about this point using electricity. We are the wire. The Holy Spirit is the energy. The wire has to stay plugged in. If the Holy Spirit is going to flow through us, if we don't stay plugged in and we let the world values, the world philosophies, the world's priorities, unplug us. Well, then we may have the Holy Spirit in us, but He does not have us. We have God the Holy Spirit. There's a difference between us having God the Holy Spirit and God the Holy Spirit having us. And so it's essential during these 50 days that we speak about things like this that we reiterate to people that confirmation was not supposed to be a one-time thing. Most people are aware that confirmation is unfortunately now labeled graduation from Catholic Church. People leave after confirmation, which is ironically the greatest tragedy given that 
making a choice to be confirmed results in them consequently leaving, which is the opposite of what is supposed to happen. So, you know, when people say to me, oh, Father, you know, why do you think the system is so in disarray, the Catholic system? That is an example I constantly use, that confirmation, the emphasis on Pentecost, the emphasis on God the Holy Spirit, is supposed to strengthen them. Instead, it doesn't seem to have that effect statistically. They leave, they disappear, they go elsewhere. And as I've mentioned to you many times, because it is an incredibly essential statistic, by grade 12 Catholic school, four years, five years after their confirmation, we tend not to see them anymore. That indicates a problem, that indicates a missing piece, whether it be us, the parents. I'm not going to blame the confirmandi because they're still young. But somehow the message of frequency equals intimacy, of staying connected, plugged in, doesn't seem to reach them. So we, Vlad and I, try different models of presentation to them. But again, unless the parents take it seriously, um, no matter what we do, they're going to follow the parents. They're gonna, not going to follow Vlad and Father Mario. They're going to follow the parents. And so it's essential. And that's why this year we added talks with the parents of confirmation and First Communion. And so I had some talks. We brought in Dr. Jessica Tai to give some talks. So again, just trying to establish a deeper connection with them so that they would be an example to their children. That's what we pray for. And uh, again, if we're going to see that choice made, that filled with the Holy Spirit happen, parents are essential. That's what I emphasized to the parents. You know, your example is essential. So again, this is what we pray for these 50 days, that God the Holy Spirit will fill these young people, our congregation, as they choose to stay connected. And that's why I keep emphasizing it. That's the hope that we have during these 50 days. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, which we offer to your majesty in commemoration of the blessed martyr Stanislaus, that it may lead us to obtain pardon and confirm us in perpetual thanksgiving. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time between Easter and Pentecost, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Francis Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. It is only by the power of the Holy Spirit that we can actually live out the Our Father prayer. So again, important as we pray the Our Father prayer that we think of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As I said yesterday, I don't think most Catholics, when they pray the Our Father prayer, think of God the Holy Spirit. Again, it's not even thinking of God the Holy Spirit that forms that intimacy as we connect with God the Holy Spirit every time we pray the Our Father prayer. I was not taught to do this as a child. I was not taught to think of God the Holy Spirit as I prayed the Our Father prayer. And that's what's missing. We're missing that link, that intimacy, that connection. And so we pray as the Lord intended. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's wish one another a happy Easter season. sins of the world have mercy on us Amen. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Let me say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We have received your heavenly gifts, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that we who in this divine banquet proclaim the death of your Son may merit to be partakers of the holy martyrs in his resurrection and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and each other. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Have a lovely day, everyone. God bless you.